Okay, so we are going to talk about the most requested video on my Twitch stream, which is the Shrimpinator build. How do I build a good Shrimpinator? So in this video, we're going to go through all the options you can go for, how to build the team and how to play the team and some gameplay of how I would play the team as well. So the plants, the most important thing is the yam and the leaf bar. The leaf bar allows you to trigger Garish one more easily and to because the garage room requires you to chain a card what a chaining is is basically you have to play two of the same type cards on different axes to activate the effect so the garage room applies two poison to a target when played in a chain which means another axe needs to play a bug card which is why we have leaf bug leaf bug allows us to chain it much simpler and allows us to chain it much more frequently as well so yam is another core component it allows us to poison the enemy and slowly take down their hp as they attack into us and allows us to waste less cast to kill the enemy less energy to kill the enemy because their hp just slowly takes down into a much easier range to one shot kill them with our axie cards so now for the mouth and the back it's entirely up to your playstyle i went with warring can and serious bite uh, maybe lock in Serious Bite, but you can definitely find Cute Bunny is fine. You can find a lot of other mouth cards that are very good, but I went with Serious Bite. Um, so Serious Bite, uh, Cute Bunny, Vegan Diet, Zigzag, all are good options. But for the back, the, this is where you have to decide on which back you'll go for, because it really depends on what the meta is. Um, I went with Warring Can because when I went Warring Can, the meta was Aqua. So Warren Can allows me to really deter Aqua players a lot uh, where they are very afraid to hit into me if they hit into me, they, I gain one energy every time they use an Aqua card into me Another option is if you want a very neutral one is a Pumpkin A Pumpkin is just good all-rounder between all metas because it just allows you to draw your card faster which means it allows you to get your Shrimp Garish easier um, Another one against like the current not really the current but Majority of the meta now is quite aggressive comms where you need to blow through the front as well. Garish Worm helps with that as well on your back. Uh, it's much more of an aggressive kind of tank, but at the end of the day, it's just, these three are all viable. It really depends on the meta and what back card you need to deal with that meta. All three are very viable. This one allows you to have more damage threat. This one is an all-rounder. Uh, allows you to draw cards and get your combo faster and watering can is against aqua teams so now we're going to move on to the shrimp garish which is your midliner it's going to be on the aqua body type nothing else and you could go for other body types but i feel the aqua body type is the best um you want to have the main components of shrimp garish the horn and the mouth are interchangeable with any other high damage high damage cards but aqua using an aqua card does more damage of course against certain type of lineups but you can definitely go for a cute bunny instead of a risky fish uh, you can go for a piranha or under you can go for maybe a clam shell uh, it's also viable you can go for star shuriken and you can go for egg bomb you can go for a lot of kestrel as long as a high damage card because the goal of a shrimp garris is when they jump the back line and they poison the guy it, you want the enemy to die as soon as possible so you need higher damage cards so they have less hp and that 5 hp does matter because they basically use one less card since they die 5 hp faster than if you were to use maybe another 110 damage card what i personally feel is the best build is this exact build the shrimp garish risky fish and oranda um you can go with piranha clamshell as well it's fine as well but for me personally i like this build a lot when you cheat in Hero's Bane and Hero's Bane, basically a cheat in jump with two Aqua cards that does 120, like a Piranha or Hero's Bane, it deals around 316 damage to be more accurate. And that actually allows you to one shot kill a bird because a bird has 312 HP. And this allows us to have some turns where we feel that the enemy is not, enemy bird or beast is not going to hit into us if they're back lane. We could play three cards to kill them, but most of the time I'm playing four cards at the end of the day to kill them so that's why i feel that it doesn't really matter too much whether you go 120 or 110 damage so definitely this is the best build but if it's too expensive go for a shrimp garish with maybe risky fish star shuriken or clam slash with another thing as long as a above 110 damage card it will work the shrimp garish will work do not go for the defensive ones like and the lower damage one those do not work like catfish anemone or that 
Okay, so that's the idea of the Shrimp Garish. You jump the backline, you poison the backline, and let him slowly take down and die as soon as possible. And then we're going to go to the last Axie. Yep, this is another example of a, a good Shrimp Garish. And okay, so again, the last Axie will be a Dust Terminator. It has to be a 46 feet, which means your body part of the eyes and ears has to be a bird or aqua type. And then the body parts is a snail shell, tiny turtle, lagging, and tawny caterpillar. This exact build. And it will reach up to 2.5k to 2.7k to 2.8k to even top 100 leaderboards if you really master the team. So this is the exact team build. Go copy it. Don't need to change too much about it and it will work. Now we're going to move on to how do I roughly play the Shrim Garish? Well, the general consensus of how to play the Shrim Garish is that you play you play your tank, you stall the game as much as possible for round 1, round 2, round 3. You try to poison the enemy team, you try to steal some energy and set up for the mid game. This is a really mid to late game oriented team. You want to stall the game up, you want to poison the enemy, then you want to move on to the mid game with your Shrim Garish to take out any backline threats or kill the frontline if you're. Terminator, only take out the backline if your Terminator can't deal with the backline. This is why the Shrimp Garage allows us to kill the backline. Uh, the Terminator can usually win out 1 versus 1 against the enemy midline, but that's the general idea of it, where you start the game with your plant, you get your Shrimp Garage to take out the backline that your Terminator usually has a bad matchup against, and then you use your Terminator to close off the match. But we're going to go to more intricate details on how to really play the Shrimp Garage properly in our gameplay footage which I'll be showing next. It really depends on the teams you fight. Like if you fight a poison team like this, it's pretty much a lose already because it's so hard for a Shrimp Garish team to beat a poison team like this. But the goal of this team, winning of this team is really getting a one-on-one -on -one versus this guy. You can't really jump him as well unless you do a double jump. If you want to beat this guy, you kind of have to like save up double shrimps and go onto this guy and into this guy and make sure he doesn't jump your mid in time. It's not an easy matchup, but we'll try. If I can get a double serious bite off on this round, it'll be a much better scenario, a much better win condition here. And the double serious paid off. I don't mind if he yams me, of course. He can steal one energy if he wants as well. Sure. Now at least we have a tempo. We have the tempo. We can still draw cards. He has currently five. I to use two, stole two, gain by one. He has four energy. This is a very good draw. I know I won't be able to kill the backline, but at least I get to give off double poison. Double poison is very crucial into lowering this guy's health no matter, and forcing him to waste energy to heal. So the reason why even though I do not kill him, I do this strategy is to make sure he wastes energy to heal up. And that's all I really need to do about it for this round 3 play. I am still safe, I am still fine as well. And if I, draw, if I draw a shrimp, I will probably be going in on him again as well. I do not want him to jump my backline. The goal of this matchup is keeping my backline safe. I must go on him. Must go on him. He's probably going to shoot up on anything. There is no way he's going to let me kill his without a fight. So I must kill this guy, keep my backliner safe, and I know my backliner can deal with his midliner easily. So I'm just going to play this play on round 4. He's probably going to try to heal up or something like that. I'm going to try to prevent that. He can jump my mid, that's no problem. I played a shield to defend up as well. That is absolutely fine. My guy has no cards at all. He can die a happy Shrimp Garish. He has played and used, we used up all his worth. This guy has played a single yam. So it's still a bit risky to attack onto this guy. Got since he only played a single yam. He could play yam again. This guy could go into me again. This guy probably might play pliers this round. So that this guy can wing shot garish my midliner. So I'm not even going to play anything at all this round. He skips. That's absolutely fine for me too. He is most probably going to... The chances of him playing these guys are so high right now. So I'm just going to play this to just arm around and get some energy back. Honestly, actually, okay, he just gave up already because he knew there is no win condition for him anymore since his backliner is dead. So that is one uh, Shrimp Garish. So basically, how I play the Shrimp Garish is I make sure to know what I need to beat. I must know that my Terminator cannot beat this guy, so I must make sure my Shrimp defeats that guy and I know what my Terminator can beat. It's all about playing a lot of matchups with Shrimp Garish and knowing what your Terminator can beat and cannot beat. And then you're going to use your shrimp to either take out 
the backliner, if your Terminator cannot beat his backliner, or you go from the front. If you go from the front, you can use your Shrim Garage to go from the front as well. So there are, that's a few scenarios. We'll go run through a few more games for Shrim Garage, okay? What do I do in this scenario? Hopefully it doesn't steal my energy. <laughs> We're lagging double poison? Nah. I'd rather just kill him off. There we go. I, the reason why I don't use Garish is because I want to use Garish against this guy. It's a much better use of Garish Worms. If I can use my Aqua cards on his backliner. So again, do not simply use your Shrim Garish cards. Against this kind of matchup, you want to make, maximize your damage. Garish is great against Reptiles, so save it for Reptiles. Aquas is great for Beast, save it for Beast. He can't use his Beast anymore. So, killing off his beast on round 2 is very good because round 3, I have a very strong Garish turn where I can poison his frontliner. So this turn is just a very solid turn for me. Double anemone mid. Oh, he's gonna get 3 stacks of poison as well. That was very bad for him. Um, 1, 4, 6. Uh, no, not his beast. The reason why I didn't is because I knew he had a reptile part. A reptile part means that he doesn't die. Unless I draw two heroes bane, like 40, 160 plus 160. Then he dies. He had 360 HP. So you must make sure to see what kind of parts he has as well. Yeah. So that's why I didn't go round 1. Yep. So you have to be careful on that as well. Uh, honestly, this turn I can actually just play a gas unleash with this. And steal his energy. Because he probably won't use... He probably won't use his... His... his I don't want to hit into his armor as well. And he probably won't use uh, much to kill me. Uh, I, I mean, he doesn't use all his energy, so I know I can steal at least one energy from him. So now I have 4 energy going to next turn. And again, he still doesn't have enough damage to kill me. He has to use 2 cards to kill me. That's the weakness of his team. He has to use 2 cards to kill me. So honestly, I don't even have to do anything this round. I just let the poison tick even more. I'm just going to keep letting the poison tick. He can give me more energy. Then I'll play next round. I'm st do not, you do not need to play cards unless you feel threatened. I do not feel threatened at all against this team without his beast. Because I took out the main threat which is the beast. So against this team, right now with the damage he has, I'm fine with just chilling. And again, waste his cards. So now, I know he has no energy at all. And I have such a very good play right now. With so much energy at all, I'm just going to end the game here. No, it's not torturing. It's There's no point in me hitting into armor. Again, if you play the Shrim Garage is all about efficiency. So, if you know that guy is going to armor, try not to use any cards against armor as well. Yep. Yeah, it is decent, but a pumpkin works absolutely fine. A pumpkin works absolutely fine as well. Kill PvP clap. <laughs> I should kill them both this turn. 48. And he uses 3 cards and he dies. Alright, GG. So that's one way of playing the Shrimp Garish as well. I'm not even going to bother with my disguise, honestly, right? Now I'll keep one disguise. I'll keep one disguise. I'll keep one disguise so I can trigger my garage if I can. 
Yeah, I've been fighting a three people, the same three people right now. I'm gonna play this way. Aqua stock next turn. Uh, Kingfisher, second time. The other guy, second time as well. That's good. Poison is always good. Poison is great because it lowers down their HP to a very good amount where it's easier to kill them. You don't have to use so much cards to kill them. That's why I love Poison a lot. I can still survive here. Right? He has how much energy does he have? He has 5 energy. He has 5, 7 energy in this turn. 7 energy. Next turn, he's gonna kill this guy this turn. He's definitely gonna have more than 4 energy. And he's just gonna blow me up. So I cannot play my Shrimp Garage next turn already. This is the last turn I can play my Shrimp Garage. I did not draw my Shrimp, that's unfortunate. But against this team, this is the last turn I can play this guy. So I have to go into onto this guy now. He's gonna take out my front, definitely. A lot of card draw on him. Oh wait, he doesn't even card draw. Okay, I know, I need to memorize. He used up two heroes and one, one something. Two heroes and one Oranda or one Koi, is it? Okay. This guy is dead. I'm not even gonna play him at all. Unfortunately, I did not draw any Mystics for our early game. So that is a bit harder for me to beat him. But let's see if we are still fine. This will definitely kill him. Okay, now we're going into the one versus one with this guy again. One versus one against this guy. I'm not even going to play a freaking Mystic. He's going to play a double coil this round. I'm pretty sure he's going to play a double coil this round. Next turn, I'll play the double Mystic. I think this is the play. So he's going to probably double coil. I'm going to chomp him. He's going to go first next round either way. He's going to do two attacks. Then the next round after that, I'm going to do a double Mystic and Allergic. He's definitely going to be slower than me. I'm going to end the game that way. So that is the play. Let's see where he plays a double coil. He doesn't even play a double coil. I could have made that play work. Could have made that play work. But now I know that he used up one coil, which means it's a confirmed double Mystic win next turn. Because he's only going to have 2 energy now. So this round is a definite double mystic into... Double mystic into allergic. Because I do not need a chomp next turn, I can chomp him next turn. And with the single allergic, he might throw off his... He might use his cards wrongly. Because when I only have 90 shield, he might use his cards wrongly this time. Nah, I think I think it's cause he used up his koi round one. Round one he used up his koi, that's why he does not have two koi's. See? Okay, he's gonna do a single koi. He's gonna mess up his damage. And I'm gonna double mystic him and next turn end him. I'm going to Chum Chum and Sekigu. GG. So, again, we lost to him first round. We know why we lost. Second round, we fought him again. And we, we come back again. We just need to keep playing the game. Keep knowing what we can do and what we can't do. Just keep practicing your Shrimp Garish. Just keep practicing your Shrimp Garish. And the Shrimp Garish team is a very solid team that can go up to the very highest tier MMRs if played correctly. So that's how you roughly play the Shrimp Garish. Uh, there's still a lot more intricacies to 
a Shrim Garage, but you just have to play it more. Uh, just keep in mind that Shrim Garage is a very advanced team. It's also a very draw dependent team. But as long as you play consistent and sometimes you might lose cause of draw, but if you keep playing consistent and keep practicing your moves and everything, and memorizing card draw, practicing card counting and everything, you will get better overall at the game. And you'll come out on top and you're definitely going to reach to the top tier MMRs with this team. So again, thank you guys for watching. If you really enjoyed the video, please do drop a like and turn on post notifications if you want to get notified for my next video. I'll be posting more videos in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for watching.